I know what it is to work. I still work when I could retire. Why am I still working when I could retire? Why do I keep working? Because I have the work ethic. How did I get the work ethic? Because my father built it into me. He wasn't a bum. And if the white liberal parents wouldn't uh, uh, baby their children and made them go to work, then the children would have a work ethic. It's not that hard to do in a child. Deny them money and tell them to go get a job. Suddenly they'll know how to work. What's so hard about that? Well, Michael, you're right. And you're right when you say not all of the people come here to work, but 70 to 80% of them work very hard and they have. Yes, to work. they do work very hard. And if you slowly uh, repatriated them by making it tougher and tougher for them to be here, the jobs would go begging, the salaries would go up, and what would happen? People would take the jobs. So the line cooks who are now making $15 an hour, suddenly they have to pay maybe $18 an hour. And native citizens would get the jobs, wouldn't they? Yeah, well, here in New York City, I think they're paying them a lot less than 15 so, so let Good, so let the greedy restaurant owners pay another $3 an hour and hire a citizen. I don't want to hear any more from the restaurant owners. They can't afford it. They can afford it pretty good. They just want to pocket the difference in there in their own pocket, their own kitty. I know what it's all about. I'm sick and tired of the double talk. I meet too many guys who are conservatives on one side and exploiting the worker on the other. Let them pay a higher wage. You know, there's plenty of Americans who could work given the opportunity. Let's go to the issue of trade schools. You open up culinary schools where culinary, tell them how to be a cook, culinary. Everything is some fancy word. Teach the guy how to cook, never mind culinary institute. You'll go past these culinary institutes with the, the, the kids with the pimples. They put a white hat on them. Teach them how to cook, for God's sakes, and let them start on the bottom. Let them start on the bottom and learn how to be a cook by working around chefs. They don't have to become a fancy chef to learn how to be a cook. Let them learn how to make an egg in the morning. Let them start to make a, a decent egg and a piece of ham. See if they can boil a, make a, fry a sausage and make an egg stand up on a plate. Start with that instead of some souffle that they don't know how to make. Which leads us to this issue of illegal immigration again. The illegitimi on the left are hysterical for a change. The, hypo the hypocrisy of Mexico is, is overwhelmingly absurd when we know how they treat immigrants themselves, kidnapping, murdering, uh, blackmailing them. Even the, the left-wing organization Amnesty International has reported on the hypocrisy of Mexico on illegal immigrants, and yet Mexico says, oh, oh, America is a racist nation. And now we have every phony Republican and uh, fraudulent Democrat standing up screaming, Nazi, fascist, uh, about the law in Arizona. What these ignoramuses don't know is that Arizona's new law actually mirrors federal law. The federal law is clear. It requires aliens, non-citizens, to register and carry their documents with them, 8 U.S.C. 1304E and 8 U.S.C. 1306A. The new Arizona law is identical. And yet you have lawmakers siding with the lawbreakers saying, how dare you insist that we follow the law? Is it any wonder the people are rallying against the illegitimi who are ruining the country? Now, I, I'm also a realist. I'm a realist because I live in the real world. I don't live in the ivory tower, and I don't live in the media tower of uh, disconnect from reality. I'm a man who actually walks in the streets and talks in the streets. So I see who does the hard work. I'm not blind. I'm not a blind man. I see in every restaurant where I go who does the cooking, who does the busing, who does the waiting. I see it. Well, that's wonderful. I am a man who works very hard way past an age when many men would be retired. I worked because the work ethic was built in me. My father drummed it into me, drummed it into me that work was a, uh, a virtue. Hard work was an even greater virtue. And harder work was even a greater virtue. I don't know, that's the way I was raised. Sometimes I wonder why do I keep working? The answer is because I have no alternative. So I keep working. It doesn't bother me. It's, a, it's a, um, an ambrosia for me. Work is my ambrosia. I wouldn't know how life could be lived without work. And yet I see millions of bums in America who have never worked a day in their life. Over here where I live, and I live in several different places, by the way, around the country and in this particular area of San Francisco, I see they build housing, uh, for Section 8 housing, primarily for illegal immigrants and gangbangers. They wanted to make sure that the white people of the area had diversity, so they brought them in. And every day I see uh, an illegal immigrant's 
an illegal immigrant in a wheelchair being pushed around by his wife, smiling as they go. I ask myself, are they kidding me? Are they kidding me? How in the world did they land on Easy Street? How did they land on Easy Street that an illegal immigrant could wind up collecting free care from the United States of America, laughing all the way to the bank? But that's just one example of the other side of the story. The big question is, could America survive without the immigrant labor force? As you well know, the Republicrats say no. As you well know, the, the bloated frauds like Newt Gingrich and Karl Rove will tell you that this law is bad. As you well know, fraudulent fake Republicans like Newt Gingrich and Karl Rove are already taking the other side, showing their true colors, which is not red, white, and blue, but red alone. And so the fact of the matter is we have to get down to brass tacks. Who would do these jobs if the immigrants were to repatriate themselves? If they said, you know what, I can't stay in America anymore because they're cracking down on illegal immigration. I don't want to be arrested. It's been fun while it lasted. I have to leave. And they all started, they didn't, wouldn't all leave, but let us say 20% of the 30 million started to leave the country. What would happen? Who would take the jobs? Who would do the gardening? Who would do the cooking? Who would do the cleaning? Who would work in the slaughterhouses? The answer is uh, people, able-bodied people on welfare. And you say, oh, what are you talking about? They don't know how to work anymore. Well, they'll learn how to work. Work is something that has to be learned. It is not in the nature of man, by the way, to work. Children are fundamentally lazy and good for nothing unless you teach them to work. They're lazy and good for nothing. They'd rather sit around and they'd rather watch television and eat a free meal and then have you give them an allowance so they can go out and get, buy some drugs and go to a, to a nightclub until they're 36 years old when Obama finally takes them off uh, health care and they're no longer a child. At 26 years of age, maybe they'll expand it to 36. They can stay home with a hairnet and, 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 and you know you both can do your hair together and your nails. The fact of the matter is a child needs to be taught to work. A child is a formless lump of clay. Children are basically lazy and no good. You have to turn them into a worker. And that has to be done from childhood. So what do you do immediately? Let's forget the, the pie in the sky, Plato's Republic, reorganizing society. Let's talk about immediately. Let's say 20% of the labor force, which is illegal, goes back home. And suddenly you have jobs begging in hotel chains to make the beds. I know who makes the beds. Hardworking Guatemalan and Mexican women. I look at them. I speak with these people. I'm not immune. I can guarantee you I leave bigger tips than the liberals do. I can guarantee you, incidentally. I can guarantee you that the libs, the big mouths, don't give them 10 cents. I can guarantee you I do. So on a personal level, I know what I'm talking about. I have sympathy for hardworking people. But who would take the job is the issue, not whether I tip and you don't. The issue is who would take the job. Are you telling me that the uh, uh, the Britney Spears lookalike uh, girls from the suburbs are going to go and uh, make the beds? Are you telling me that the girls from the suburbs are going to go and uh, uh, do menial jobs like becoming a bus boy or a bus girl? I'm saying yes, they will have to. As the economy gets worse and worse, as the government finally acknowledges they're just printing money and there is no money, yes, they're going to work again. They're going to learn how to work. Maybe they'll drop a few trays in the beginning, but eventually the girls will learn to work again. The boys will learn how to work again. And then we will open thousands of trade schools across America. You put me in charge of this, I can guarantee you, I could straighten this country out in less than four years. I would take hundreds of millions of dollars that is being wasted on Nancy Pelosi's uh, uh, road projects, and I would open up trade schools across America. And I said trade. Don't tell me everyone's ready for college and they all need a computer. Take a look at what's in college today. Go take a look at what goes on in your colleges. Everyone's a college boy. Take a look with the pants hanging under their behinds. That's a college boy marching around. The idiots, they're, they're stupid when they come in. They're stupid when they go out. They want to take a job right away. They're not equipped for anything. They never should have been in college to begin with, 90% of them. Send them to trade school. See if they can even do that. That's not easy to learn how to turn a screwdriver or to cut a, a, a piece of wood straight. Go see how hard that is to learn how to be a plumber or an electrician or a carpenter or, a, or an auto mechanic. We need millions of people retrained to do actual jobs. And it could be done right here in this country. How is it that the Mexican people can train their men to be good tradesmen? Where did they learn to do this? How did so many Mexicans, for example, learn to do these things? The answer is they learned in their home country, which has a better trade school system than we do. And that is because we have been under the delusion for many years that everyone is a college boy, a white-collar web designer, or God knows what he's going to be. 
a CEO or a web designer. Come out and create a website. Well, the fact is he has to learn how to fix a carburetor. Maybe he ought to learn how to put a brake into a car. Maybe you ought to learn how to attach a muffler underneath the carriage of a car. And then we could become self-sufficient again from the point of view of labor. But that's skilled labor, my friends. Trade schools are not unskilled labor. That is skilled labor, and we can certainly train an entire generation in less than a year. We train men during before World War II how to fly airplanes in a year. We train... 17-year-old boys had to fly Mustangs in less than a year. We train them how to, how to drive tanks in less than a year. Don't tell me we can't train a generation how to turn a screwdriver in less than a year. No, it's a matter of whether we have the vision to do it, and we have the leadership to do it, and whether we have the will to do it.